12-sided stories is for mature audiences and often deals with topics that may be difficult for some listeners. Discretion is advised. Brave the dark woods of folk horror with us in this Vason actual play, The Hidden North. Remember, 12-sided stories are always story-heavy, rules-light, and full of fright. Hello, everybody, and welcome to The Hidden North, episode number five. My name is Wes Otis, and this is our Vason actual play. I am here with some amazing players. Let us start with Piper. Hello, everyone. Uh, I am Piper, a.k.a. Matihi, and I am playing Elizabeth Purse, who uses she, they pronouns. They are a writer and a little bit too curious for her own good, but might get into some good depending on the amount of notes that she takes. Hello, everyone. My name is Candace, also known as Candace Magnificent. I am here today playing your not so friendly, but well-meaning Dr. Hildegard Brunson. Both of us use they, she pronouns. Hello, I'm Saint or Saint Spider, and I am playing Sieve, our resident cowardly occultist who unfortunately started some nonsense and uh, was not prepared for the consequences. Let's see if she learns from that. Probably not. Hey, I'm Michelle, and I am playing Greta Nielsen, your resident academic, who is just trying to make sense of it all. Both of us are she, her. Enjoying the show? Then take a moment to join our Patreon. Support the podcast and get early access to episodes and bonus content. Head to 12 Sided Stories Patreon today. All right. This is a great place for a recap. So last time we were together, you all were in a small village home on the edge of the town near the woods, investigating the murder of a wife. You had heard about this case while in the future from Algot the butler at Castle Gillenkreutz. Now, I'm not going to go through all of that because it would take a long time. But now in the present day at Absalia, you have decided to go and, and investigate the murder of this woman. Well, through your investigation, you found out that fairies are definitely involved. The children have disappeared as well. Instead of children, there were these stick figure children, dolls made out of vines and things like that, and they were living. They started running around the house and causing havoc. There was also rosaries underneath each of the beds. It almost looked like it was set up that he did it. But then after you looked at all the clues, you can tell that he was not really a part of it. Then Steve decided to go to the back of the home and saw the nun from the forest in episode, I believe, two and one and two, standing there with those children, with the the vine and twig children, and they went back into the forest. Meanwhile, the police showed up and started searching around, talking to the husband, and talked with you briefly. One of them, the older gentleman, completely believed in the supernatural and all that. The other one did not, and you all decided to leave. You were going to the asylum to talk to Linnea, who had sent you letters and asked you to come and be a part of the society because of your gifts to be able to see Vason. So the final thing that happened is you went in and you spoke with Linnea and she surprised you because she knew all of your names. I believe that I had mentioned that the asylum was broken up into two sections, the rich and the not so fortunate. The rich side treated better because of the money And the poor side, not so much. Linnea's on the poorer side of things, but she checks herself in and out of the institution. She has moments of clarity and we'll pick it up with you all inside of that room, talking with her. It's so nice to meet you all. I believe you're here because of the society. I 
wrote letters and put them in the post hoping that they would find you, but I wasn't sure if, and she goes really quietly, they would get your letters and, and not take them to you. They, they've been trying to keep me from reaching out to other people. They're all over the place. And then she kind of just stares off to the wall as if her mind is thinking about everything at once, trying to correlate all of the different things going on. You kind of had the same feeling with the time travel where all of these different things going on in your brain are kind of happening. Okay. What would you like to say or ask or do? Elizabeth will kind of step around seeing that Linnea is more looking off to the side, kind of crouching down slightly to be more in Linnea's sight line and ask, sorry, um, who exactly is uh, stopping you from sending out letters? I think it's the fairy king. I'm not sure. Every once in a while he shows up and he, he dances on the windowsill and he plays a song and his court laughs. They don't say anything to me, though. Do you think they help bring you here? No, I, I, I can come and go as I please. I just, I think that when the nuns come here and we have services, it chases a lot of them away. And so it's a little safer here. But I, I don't, I don't trust the church either. So it's like a, a midway point. Nuns come in, we get to pray, but they don't, they don't stay. And it's not like a church. So I don't think anyone's, except for people like you who have the sight, are, are safe to talk to, fairy or not. I hey, that's probably for the best. Um, so you you know who we are. Um, I'm guessing you've seen pictures before or something like that? She points at her temple and she goes, I get visions of uh, people who are like myself, who, who know what's going on. I don't know if it's a, a curse or if it's a gift, but I'm trying to bring the society back. I, I don't know what's going on with the with the Vasin, with the fairies in particular. They seem very angry and aggressive at this point. There's been a lot of violence. I think that's what we're going to try and help out with, eh? And Elizabeth looks up and looks at the others. Just kind of smile and nod. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Hildegard looks very straight-faced, but is, like, worrying at the single rosary bead that's on their necklace as they kind of just take in what this woman is saying and try to wrap their head around it. At the mention of a fairy king, Steve just had full hackles and neck hairs raised, <laughs> liberty spiked. But then when the mention of a nun came up, definitely it came to surface, our horrifying fairy or enchanted dream. So she's cautiously, <laughs> she approaches and she says, well, we've actually been looking for a nun of some sort. Have there been any of these religious figures coming here that are maybe a little off, for lack of a better word? I mean, I understand the question you're asking. I don't know if I've seen anyone that I would think was an enemy to the fairies? Why, what kind of nun have you seen? I mean, I think there's only one type of nun, right? <laughs> Usually, yes, but could I relay to her the dream? And also that we have died several times. <laughs> yeah, sure. So you go into story mode and explain all this, and she nods her head as you're talking, and she goes, that's very disconcerting. I don't know what to say to that. That's that's horrible. And you've been through this twice before? Well, apparently we have no distinct memory of it, but the evidence is there. I will say that the Order has had... I'm sorry. The Order is what we used to call ourselves. The society used to have a lot of nuns and priests in it. The church was curious about Basin. And the ones that were less firebrands, ones that were less fanatical about their teachings, really wanted to learn. 
And if they had the sight, they would join us. So there have been nuns and priests with the society for a very long time, at least one or two. In, in fact, I just met one recently that's already at Castle Gillenkreutz. She wasn't a strange nun, though. Have you ever heard of a book called The Dangers of Pagan Vasin in the Modern Age? That book is propaganda at its worst. It's also very old. I was wondering, are you aware of any movements or even just small groups of people who are trying to exterminate Vasin? Well, for a time, the society itself tried to exterminate a lot of Vasin. There was kind of a schism since we're using so much religious terminology. There were some people that wanted to study and some that wanted to eradicate. Who wrote that book again? She asks. Sister Efka. Oh, Sister Efka. I believe she had the sight as well. She was a firebrand for sure. Definitely felt that the Vasin were a threat to Christianity. Now, could there be a modern day church-led movement against Vasin that's secret? Anything's possible. And I explained to her what we saw in the dream, the dead fairies, the, you know, the fairy stew and whatnot. And I also explained to her that they're after us because somehow they feel that we are doing this to them. Or at least that's the general feeling that we're getting. Oh, maybe I've done the wrong thing pulling you all together. As someone who has had to go up against the Vazen by myself, I personally think that the best idea is to... Summon a group of people who can do it together. And that is what we have proven to ourselves and what we will continue to prove. Well, that's a good attitude. Like anything, not every Vasin is good and not every nun is evil. And so I would tread carefully if the Fairy King is torturing me with their song. And there's a song that was played in your dream that young Elizabeth heard and that you, Greta, know as well, or are trying to figure out. You're all connected, obviously, now. You've been through this a few different times, and it feels like this might be the last time that you get to try to crack whatever's going on. If you finish the clock, your enemies might be both Vason and the nun, but uh, you, it's going to be hard to find out. I. It will be a bit difficult, I'll say, and Elizabeth has been kind of writing all of this down as they've been speaking. I believe we can do it this time. I mean, we have to. When you go to Castle Gillenkreutz, you will find it a bit in disarray. There's a massive library there, but before you can even start looking through it, the books need to be put away, and there's a lot to be done at the castle. Hey, well, you don't have to worry. We'll make sure to... Take care of the place. I mean, I'm sure we've done it at least two other times, so why not a third? There is a brownie that lives there inside the library. He came over with one of our members from England years ago. If you help him with the library, he may be willing to talk to you. Cleaning that big of a room is difficult, but he's taken it upon himself to try to do it but there's no other of his kind here. He's the outside basin that might be able to give you some insight. It's the only help I can give you. Steve goes and grasps her hand and looks at her eyes and just says, thank you so much for your sacrifice. We will not let you down this time. And she looks at the others. She says, she says we can't. <sighs> Child, I've been through a lot in my life and I know that if my vision said that you all were meant to be here to do this then that's what I believe you will do she nods and stands up okay I guess it's time to appease a brownie all right so any other questions before you leave any other things that need to be talked about in terms of putting kind of maybe two and two together would it be possible to roll maybe like um, 
a logic plus learning check to see it's like, what is the significance of the fairy king being here and kind of dancing the song if there's some sort of tie in there? Sure. You can all roll. All right. Well, I got one success. I checked my notes. I made the most abysmal roll. I, I did. Mine is um, abysmal. I got a one. Five twos, oh. a three, and a four. <laughs> because of the one, that's a critical fail. A beam <gasps> falls down, you die. All right, so. <laughs> what? West being Wrong a jerk. Game. <laughs> Wrong game. <laughs> All right. And I got one success. Candace, what did you get? I did not get any successes. Two successes. All right, since you got two successes, I'll give you two facts. The first fact is the Fairy King does not come out of the fairy realm often. So there's probably a major reason why he's appearing here now. Usually he is in court in the fey realm and won't even get around humans. The second fact that I'm going to say that Sieve kind of puts together is that the fairy king is using the song in some way that it wasn't originally intended for. Almost as if he knows how to draw you in, or at least most of you in. So those are the two major clues that you get. And I just sent Piper down a whole rabbit hole, I can tell. <laughs> so many notes. Yeah. I'm having a, a crisis, so I'm like, what? <laughs> all these things, all these connections, oh my God. Those are the facts that you've learned. What do you want to do next? Now, there are a couple of options. Of course, there's the castle. It is still relatively early in the day. It's not too late. And if, you know, you, you keep talking and finding out a, and talking about possibly a kid in society or whatever, there's also the local cathedral. If you want to go snooping around where there's a lot of rosary beads. Oh, yeah, the guy threw up all those rosary beads. It was horrible. That was awesome. It was really awesome, but horrible. That was, uh, that's one of my top 10 things I've ever done. So <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you're pleased with yourself. Always, yeah, I have to be. <laughs> there are options. If you want to go check out the nunnery or any of that stuff, that's all open to you. It's really up to you what you want to do. <laughs> I do have a question. Are we, I'm assuming that when we kind of came to ourselves here, did we have luggage? Yeah. Okay. And we're hauling around our luggage. Your bags and stuff were already taken to. Oh, taken ahead. Taken mm. ahead. Okay. And they're at the castle already. Elizabeth will look to the others and say, so do we want to go to the nunnery or maybe go to the castle maybe settle down, do the kind of introductions and everything, and maybe compare what we're thinking. I have numerous ideas right now what it might be, potentially. And Elizabeth just kind of, like, turns their journal, and just inside is full of scribbles, just very fastly taking notes. Sieve squints at them, definitely cannot read her handwriting, and it's like, okay, yes, definitely. I would love to go see that huge library. I, me too. And I know our little brownie friend could be extremely helpful. My vote is for Gillenkreutz. Hey, I said that. Yeah, we can go back to Gillenkreutz. I would really relish a bath right now. Oh. A bath would be divine. Maybe um, some sandwiches too? A snack? Oh, yeah. Oh. You you didn't think of sandwiches because she said relish bath, right? <laughs> <laughs> I really like a hot dog. I really I for some reason. I want a hot dog for no bad reason. I want a condiment for some reason. <laughs> <laughs> they have relish back then. <laughs> I'm sure they did. It's probably delicious. Cucumber oh. is refreshing. Yeah. <laughs> it's not what we think of. It doesn't have all the sugar that we have now. That's but. true. <laughs> I don't like sweet relish. I like dill relish. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All right. So now that my stupid dad joke is done, let's move on. <laughs> As you're heading out and you're crossing Uppsala, I will say you do feel like you are being watched. 
So let me get a observation plus empathy roll from everyone. I got three successes. Ooh. Oh, wow. I've got one goose egg. Nothing? Nada. <laughs> Two. Two successes. Ah, uh, ah, uh, ah, uh, ah. Uh. <laughs> so everybody, except for Hilda. Don't say it. Don't say it like that. Hildegard. <laughs> That's an embarrassment of riches compared to what we got over here. <laughs> Hildegard the Oblivious. Come on. As they walk through the streets of Uppsala. All right. (laughs) A big, pointless refrigerator of a lady. (laughs) You keep things cold and that's all we know. Like the relish that we're... (laughs) Like the relish. (laughs) Yes, yes. You need somebody to saw off your arm? That's me. Anything else? No. Amazing. Thank you. All right. So as you're walking through the streets, you notice that there are tiny faces peeking out from around corners and disappearing as you're walking towards the castle. Greta, since you got three successes, I'm going to tell you the extra stuff you observe. What you're noticing is that these buildings are mainly one or two stories high. On the two-story high buildings, there's ledges between the first floor and the second floor. And you see small faces peeking around the corners of those buildings as you're passing by and then disappearing. As you're walking, at some point, you pass an alleyway and you hear the sound of fist punching into flesh. You turn and look and you see these hunched over, jewel-encrusted creatures with long gossamer wings beating up what you assume to be a corpse. I stop and point it out to the others. Do they see it? When the rest of you look, it's an empty alleyway. Do I recognize the corpse? No, you'd have to get closer. (laughs) Looks like an alley. Hildegard crosses their arms over their very broad chest and turns in the direction to like keep walking okay (laughs) (laughs) meanwhile steve is still looking at little teeny faces staring at us that she can see they'll look down at you and when you look at them they just disappear and then you'll look around and you'll see another group of them on the other side and then they disappear oh is it like that kind of like seeing in the peripheral yeah if you don't look at them you can see them just kind of there looking at you Well, it gives me the fairy heebie-jeebies, so I'm trying to follow Hildegard again. Just like, yeah, she's got the right idea. I don't see nothing down that thing. What, throw a a rock or something if there's actually something down there? I don't know. (laughs) Elizabeth is going to come up to Greta and say, I don't see any. Do you see the other? There's a bunch of faces just around. Is is it faces down there, too? Or just a man being kicked? He's being kicked by these three creatures that are about three feet tall, have very light, almost gossamer wings. Could you ask them to stop? I'll come with you. No, I'm not walking down there. Oh, okay. Okay. Well, I'll stand with you while you (laughs) yell and I'll run with you when we need to go. Okay. So I yell, hey, stop that. And as they turn towards you, they start to transform. One of them gets a little taller. One of them stays the same. And the third turns even smaller into a newborn baby. And they say, have you seen our mother? She's probably at the cottage. I don't know how to get back to the cottage. And the little, the medium sized girl picks up the baby and they start walking towards you. I don't know how to get there either. Have you seen our mother? No. You're lying. I haven't seen her since when? They're talking. What are they saying? They're asking if I've seen their mother. Have you tried telling them about the orphanage? Would an orphanage take these children? Do do I know that Steve saw the nun going into the woods? No. I mean, unless Steve, did you tell? When I told Linnea everything, I recounted everything I saw. Yeah, and held nothing back. So then I direct them to that part of the woods. Well, that's outside of where you're at. You're in the middle of the city in the middle of the day. The woods are pretty far at this point. I know, but I'm not taking them there. I'm directing them there. (laughs) So you start pointing and they go, why won't you tell us what happened to mother? We saw all that red stuff. She's okay, correct? Did our father do it? Oh, we don't know who did that. 
the corpse behind them starts to rise up. Of course it does. Oh. And you notice that it's the nun. And she just stands back there and watches them walk towards you. Isn't she your mother? She's mother, but not our mother. She says we have to stay with her now. You could stay with us. You could be part of us. I have things I need to do. Time is ticking. Greta, what are they saying? Should we go? I think I'm re- relaying all of this, and I'm like, they're walking towards us. They're walking towards me. They're, they're... Let's vacate and maybe go. Can I get a fear check from you real quick, Greta? Because they're creepy. I guess. Yeah, but all her homies are there. Yeah, they get. <laughs> oh, yeah. you get a plus three. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, plus three. I got a success. Yay. Yay. <laughs> so yeah, that's all you need in this case. You just go? You just leave real quick? Yeah. Okay. So you walk away, and they don't seem to be able to go outside of where the dark shadow has cast itself. One thing you do realize, and you don't need to make a roll for this, is the nun seems to cast the shadow. And it's this huge kind of gloomy area that she cast forward. And it reminds you a lot of the woods. It's very depressing. It is not one of anger as much as uh, regret. So out of your peripherals, as you're walking down the street, those of you who made your observation see the tiny faces every once in a while watching you. You make it to Castle Gillenkreutz. It is this huge, huge building. Beautiful stonework, some gargoyles up on top, big stained glass windows, but it also looks like it hasn't been upkept very well. Some of the stones look like they've seen way too many summers and haven't been repaired. You knock on the door and it swings open almost immediately. Standing in front of you is a five foot tall, dark brown skinned nun with big brown eyes smiling up at you. Hello, it's so nice to meet you. Who am I meeting? Hi, I'm Greta. Oh, Greta, nice to meet you, nice to meet you. Who, who is this large, strapping woman? I'm Hildegard. Oh, Hildegard, it's nice to meet you. And and you too, what's your name? Oh, Steve. Hi, nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, nice to meet you. And and you, young lady? Hi, I'm um, Elizabeth Purse. Lovely to meet you. Oh, it's very nice to meet you. Welcome, welcome to Castle Gillingroyd's. It's It's... It's always great to meet new people. Uh, Now, are you here for a tour or? Uh, Linnea sent us. Oh. And and what is your name? Oh, Lucy. Sister Lucy. It's lovely to meet you, Sister Lucy. We've um, heard a bit about you. Oh, you have? Just a wee bit. Hi. Oh, okay. Uh, Did you speak with uh, Linnea first? Hi, we did. Ah, okay. Well, come in, come in, come in. Elizabeth will step inside, kind of look around, see if anything changes when they step inside, as they weren't able to before. The, yeah, the first time you did this was at the back door, and you walked in, and there was just this really big, bright light, as if you were going to heaven. <laughs> and then suddenly you were outside. This time you walk in, and it's a musty large entryway of a castle with these huge old tapestries. There is a bucket on the floor and a mop and a bunch of cobwebs everywhere. Sister Lucy goes, I'm really, really sorry. I've been trying to clean up as much as possible, but this place, it needs more hands than uh, I currently have. But let's, let's do a quick tour of our wonderful castle. There is quite a bit to see. She starts to show you around and you suddenly realize that Sister Lucy is the only person here right now. She shows you what probably was once the servants' quarters, which are a complete mess. There is a huge kitchen that needs a lot of love. She shows you upstairs. She goes, we have several rooms up here. I'm in the last room. On the left, on the right is our one bathroom on this level. We all have to share. The bathrooms were added 25 years ago, so they're practically new compared to the rest of the castle. 
There are several rooms, so pick the one you'd like. Uh, the first place I cleaned was my own room. I, I hate to say, I know that might seem selfish. I, I did pray on it before I did it, but I still did it. I don't mind seeing Vason, but seeing spiders scares me a little. And so I had to cleanse the room. Now, there are several rooms that I can't find the keys for and that look kind of important. Um, you say you say we. Who else is here? Oh, well, Mr. Algot, our butler, or I guess the castle's butler, is here. Uh, he, le- he actually let me in, luckily. He's uh, a unique man. A uh, very unique man. Maybe a bit too much into the spirit and not the holy one. Um, so there's that. But he, he's a nice man. He's a nice man. We shouldn't judge people on their foibles. But he sees out at the market at this point getting food. He said he knew more people were going to show up. And, and here you are. Does anybody want to help me uh, clean? Uh, you know, I think uh, a wise person once said that uh, cleanliness is next to godliness. So I would be okay with that. Oh, okay. Well... Is there a place for me to have a bath after I'm finished? Uh, the bath was the second place that I cleaned. So yes, it's at the end of the hall. Uh, luckily, you won't have to carry buckets of water up the stairs. Like I said, the plumbing's relatively new. The lighting is not... There's no electricity here. It's all oil lamps and gas lighting and, and stuff like that. If, if you smell sulfur or um, uh, rotten eggs, it's either a gas leak or the devil. So just be careful either way. Both those things can be bad. Understood. And thank you for the warning there, for sure. Anyway, I should get back to cleaning. Go ahead and pick your rooms. There's at least eight up and down this hallway that you can take a look at. They're all basically the same. They're going to need some cleaning as well. When you're ready, come let me know and we can tackle the rest of the castle. I guess you could say we can storm the castle. Uh, All right. Anyway, I'll I'll see you all downstairs. So you all start looking at the bedrooms. They all have a lot of dust and they are covered in white sheets. Like there's white sheets over the furniture. The bedding is musty and old canopies over each of the beds. There are small windows. They're not like these huge cut out real nice. They're windows for people to fire arrows out of kind of thing. (laughs) Even though it's summer, it's cool inside of the castle because of the thick walls. The rooms look like it would take you two or three hours to clean, maybe even a little longer, and then to wash the bedding, which you may want to do. There's probably something living than all of it. It's probably bad. So you must not get visitors very often. Oh, I've only been here for a little bit. Uh, this castle uh, was abandoned by the society after the, the, the downfall. So I see. Um, I'm new, though. Like you, I'm learning all of this now. I just I started seeing this troll that lived next to my church just on a mountain, sitting there next to a tree, looking at me. He kept whittling and just kind of staring at me when I came to church. And I was like, what is this troll? And I went up and I I asked, trolls don't have a really big vocabulary. Was he handsome? Not at all. No, no, he was... Um, Bit of a troll. Boo. Anyway, I mean, for other trolls, he might have been. I mean, you never know, like, what's attractive to another troll. I was probably hideous to that troll. Yeah, you win some, you lose some. You do. You do. Um, so I, I don't know what troll love is like. Anyway, we're getting off topic. The point is, is that I started seeing these things, and I got this message like you all did. And I'm here, scrubbing floors and trying to get rid of as much cobwebs as possible. What is your stance on Vason? Oh, they're fascinating. I really wanted the troll to be able to tell me stuff. Uh, But like I said, it's very small. Um, Maybe they speak a different language. I don't understand. What what was the troll whittling? Uh, It looked like some sort of, I want to say like a a statue of a person, but of a troll. Did it look like you, but like a troll? No, no, not like that at all. I believe it was his mother. 
because he kept saying mother while he was whittling. I think Basin are interesting. I know some of them can be bad, but I haven't met any bad ones yet. There's an aura of wholesomeness that just kind of tumbles from Sister Lucy. Well, maybe we could all explore the stories that we have with with Basin while we get everything all cleaned up. Oh, that'd be lovely, I'm sure. I mean, what stories do you all have? Now, here's the question. Do you drop this huge story that you've been through on top of Sister Lucy, or do you just tell the origin stories of your... I think we start with the origin stories, Mm -hmm. kind of feel her out because I don't... She says she's in the, I'm just fascinated by Vason camp, but she is a nun and I don't, you know, I don't want to reveal too much to somebody who just wants to murder all the Vason. <laughs> totally understandable. So all of you start helping out with the cleaning. And at some point, Algot comes back and he's much younger, but he still looks tired. And he is laden with a bunch of groceries and food And he says, oh, we have new people. I was told more of you would be showing up soon. Excuse the mess. We're we're doing the best we can to get it up to date. I'm going to take all this food down to the uh, pantry and I'll come back up and and we can, you know, get to know each other. Or at least you can let me know if there's something I can do to help you. And he leaves. Unless there's anything else, all of you clean for a while and do what you can insert cleaning montage basically yeah. <laughs> yes 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 do you all stick together or is anyone gonna try to peel off and see if they can find the library i've been curious about the library if it makes sense i maybe finish cleaning my own room earlier and then wander to the library or wander to look for the library yes if i could find it okay elizabeth i know you were interested as well do you look around at all at some point or no? I do believe that Elizabeth does start to kind of look around the place. I don't know if the library specifically, but I believe that Elizabeth kind of wants to get a lay of the the castle itself and maybe find a good, like, a writing room or anything that they could hole up in if they really want to get into sort of writing. Sounds good. Let's start with Hildegard and Greta. You two stick with Lucy and are cleaning up the main room, dealing with getting the carpets together. Lucy talks about possibly hiring some of the children that work in the area to come and take all of these tapestries and stuff to like the washerwomen of the town. As you're talking with her, I'm going to say that the vibe you both are getting, or at least the feeling you're getting is that she has not had a bad interaction with the Vason yet. She does say that the troll only said the word mother over and over again. Did it say mother while looking at her or when looking at the statue? Oh, both. I I didn't think anything out of it. I mean, I did think for a second, what if he thinks I'm a mother superior, which I'm not. I'm way too young to be a mother superior. I still have years to go. But how would, how would a troll know that? I don't know anything about trolls. I thought maybe they were theologians at some point. I I don't know. It's possible, right? I mean, you can study. Even if you're not Christian, you can study Christianity, right? Anything is possible, I suppose. Yes. Yes. I I never, I, I don't think trolls are known for their academic prowess, though. After speaking with him, I would agree. But I don't like to make judgments of people. I mean... It's very possible I just caught him on an off day. Maybe he speaks a different language. That happens all the time. Hildegard just keeps kind of scrubbing and focusing on the task at hand. But like they're on their hands and knees for a lot of this, you know, kind of trying to scrub the floor and all that stuff. But they're also looking under things, seeing if there's trap doors, like being nosy. They're being very productive. And she's like really getting into the nooks and crannies. She's giving it the old college try, but definitely is absolutely skulking every inch of every room that she cleans. <laughs> well, in that case, give me an investigation roll. I got one success. All right. You are scrubbing and you get, you start going underneath one of these couches and 
you find a tooth. Is it human? Yes, and it's relatively fresh. Uh oh. Sister, um. Yes. When did you say you got in? A couple of days ago. Why? Was there anyone here when you got in? Just Mr. Algot. Just Mr. Alcott. Did did he seem to be in any kind of a state or, or, or strange headspace at all? Um, well, he was liquored up a bit, but beyond that, no. And has he been liquored up since? I don't know if there's a time when he doesn't partake in the liquoring up. Hildegard just kind of nods and walks to the other side of the room, crossing in front of Greta. And then says, Greta, uh, I, I found this on the floor. I think uh, you might want to have a look. But quietly, so that the sister can't necessarily hear. And just drop the fresh tooth in your hand. You know, I turn so the sister can't see me and I'm eyeing it. Does it look human? Yes, it is human. It's a human tooth. It's got a little blood on it. Molar, front tooth. What are we talking here? Looks like a molar. Ugh. I think maybe we need to talk to Mr. Alcott and see if we can help him shake this terrible addiction he seems to be warring with. Well, and find out if this is his or... Perhaps, yes. Someone else's. Unless, of course, he is not himself. Mm, I hadn't thought of that. He must stay liquored up constantly. I know plenty of drunks, plenty of men who like their liquor. Mm-hmm. But it's worth thinking about. Absolutely. Yes, I hadn't thought of that. That's disconcerting. So do you guys head down to the kitchen where Mr. Alcott had gone? Yeah, I want to look at him. Mm -hmm. I keep saying Alcott. It's Algot. <laughs> Damn it. Herr Algot. Herr Algot. <laughs> <laughs> the two of you go down and there is one single gas light that has been fired up, and Mr. Algot is sitting at this large table, and you see him shaking as he puts more what looks to be probably whiskey in a cup. And without even turning towards the two of you, he goes, I know I've met you two before, and I know you've died, and I don't know why. And that's where we're going to end this episode. What? All right. That's why he drinks, the poor creature. <laughs> ah, good old traditional distress. <laughs> he said he wouldn't remember us. Mm -hmm. He said he wouldn't know. Mm -hmm. It's the alcohol that makes him remember. Uh -huh. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. Yep. Figure it out. Poor baby. I feel terrible. So th <sighs> he needs a hug. Thank you, everybody, so much for joining us. Because these wonderful players do things other places. Uh, so let's find out. <laughs> Saints. Saint's kind of shaking her head no. So let's start with Saint. Tell us what's going on. You did post on X or Twitter or whatever. I, I did. I did a repost of this for this. Yes. So I will represent 12. Yes, I looked up my password because I forgot it. <laughs> and uh, I logged into X. So yeah, if you want to follow me on there for some reason, I am at Saint Spider TV. That's S-A-I-N-T-S-P-I-D-E-R-T-V. And, you know, I don't know. If it gets a new CEO, hey, that'll be a pop in place again. So just there you go. Maybe look out for that. Also, no, I've been in other stories on 12 Sided Stories. That's more important. <laughs> Listen to those. Please support us. Thank you very much. <laughs> My name is Candace the Magnificent, uh, probably for an extended amount of time. You can find me at the Candace Marie on Twitter and Blue Sky, at Candace Magnificent everywhere else. You can hear more of me on Beyond the Outer, which is our monthly Patreon exclusive podcast. It is a mothership campaign with myself, Janine, Michelle, Wes as our fantastic warden, and Chrissy in color. Super, super fun. Please take a look at that and support us uh, on Patreon. You can also hear more of me on the podcast Bloom and Blight, as well as the upcoming The Albright Podcast, which is actually a, an audio drama based on a D&D &D tabletop role-playing game. And are you still doing In the Shallows? I sure am. That's a good segue to Piper. Piper is my fantastic DM in What We Do in the Shallows, which is an original 5e horror pirate campaign that is very queer and very romantic and very dramatic. So if you are interested in more feelings and and thrills and chills and smooching 
please, every other Saturday, come watch us do that live on twitch.tv forward slash Matihi. Hello, everyone. I have been Piper and still am and probably will be also for a while. Uh, you can find me on Twitter at Maddie Matihi, which is M-A-T-T-Y-M-A-T-E-E-H-E-E. And you can also find me at Twitch, as uh, Candace had said, at Matihi. And yeah, come by every other Saturday to see some gay stuff. It's a fun time. Lots of pirates, lots of horror, lots of monsters and kissing monsters. It's a great time. This has been a great time. And of course, um, my first time here on 12 Sided Story, and I'm absolutely loving it and very honored to be here. And make sure to check out the back catalog, because if you don't, I will know. I will know. (laughs) (laughs) you say say matihi three times in a mirror and they'll know they're just there there. have you listened to the back catalog shit (laughs) i guess i i will now i promise hey i'm michelle and you can find me on the socials at michulu that's m-i-c-h-u-l-h-u and you can find my music and Wes's amazing sound effects if you subscribe to the Plate Mail Games catalog through Battle Bards. And you can watch Wes and I just talk about gaming stuff and whatnot on Friday nights on Twitch on the 12 Sided Stories channel. And I'm Wes Otis. You can find me at Plate Mail Games on all the socials. You can also find our show, 12 Sided Stories, the number 12 and then Sided Stories on all the different socials as well or on our website at 12sidestories.com, all written out, all one word. If you want to help out the podcast, you can become a Patreon member. That would be awesome. You could also give us a review or a shout out on your favorite platform. Those things help a great deal. Come subscribe to us on YouTube or on Twitch. Those help a lot. Follow on Twitch. What everything that you can uh, feel comfortable doing is very helpful, and we really appreciate it. Join us on our Discord, too. We love hearing from our fans and what they're doing, and if they have any questions, those are always cool. So yeah, come check it out. We look forward to speaking to you more uh, in another week. Bye, everybody. Bye.